Now, because of the auto fall through thing, it's going to get hung up anyway, right? But there are places with pattern matching where you can get yourself into trouble, and it will match on a, on a less specific match that still has more priorities and, and cause, you, cause you some problems. So just to be safe, it's always a good idea to make hang up the last, um, the, last, you know, the last application you call in any extension. Now, a lot of my examples don't do that. And so this is one of the things where I say, do, do what I say, not what I do. Okay? But uh, if we were to put those three together, the answer and the hello world and the hang up, how'd that look? Just like that, right? Now, anybody here do, do any computer programming or scripting? A few. What's the first program you always write when you're learning a new programming language? Hello world. Where, there I present to you hello world of the asterisk. Scripting language, right? Not too difficult. Answer the call, play hello world, and hang up the call. Should we give it a try? Sure, why not? All right. Okay, just for the fun of it, I'm going to move some things around here. Get rid of that template there. Um, I'm going to create a features context. I'm going to put the extension in there just to show you how includes work. You can there, but you guys can't over there. Okay, let me see if uh, the problem is like it's. Is that enough? Let me let me let me resize this this window a little bit then, so it's not coming off the other side of the screen, which is kind of hard to do since I can stretch. All right. Is that good? All right. OK, so here I'm going to answer. Oops. Playback. Hello, world. Hang up. Does that work? What have we forgotten? We forgot our include statement, right? The way it is right there, that wouldn't work because there's, there's no 6599 in that user's context, right? Why the user's context? Because that's what we specified in the channel driver. But now we're going to say include features. So if it doesn't find 6599 up here in users, then it'll go down here in features and find it there. Okay? Got that. Set our verbosity down to 2, do our dial plan reload, turn our verbosity back to 3, and now we're ready to give it a, chip, a shot here. So it worked, huh? You expected the no. Uh, no, but I'll throw a chocolate. Who thought that was awesome? Hey, that guy right there. I told you I'd keep you awake this afternoon. <laughs> no? I, I, you have to be, be faster next time. See, I, I, I reward proper behavior. See, that's a good, good motivational tool here. OK. So you can, you can see here exactly, exactly what happened. If you look, it's, it shows you that it, it executed priority one and did the answer. It executed priority two and did the playback. And then it executed priority three and did the hung up. Right? Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Now let's get back to the slides here. Question. Sure. Must the priority always start at one? It must always start at one. Yep. When you do a reload and you have skipped a number or something didn't start at one, will it uh, flash an error? It will not flash an error unless you've duplicated a priority. If you went one, two, two, three, it would say, hey, I see the number two twice. But if you went one, two, four, it wouldn't complain, oh, there's no three. It would assume that you did that on purpose. Okay? So there we are, back, back to our example. Any questions on that example? Pretty straightforward, right? Question back there. Uh-huh. So, so sometimes, especially with SIP phones, it takes a second for the audio to start flowing and open up the network ports and that sort of thing. So it is a good idea. You can use the wait application. Say, hey, I want to wait one second before I start playing back sound pumps. That is a, that is a good point. Okay. So 
this brings us to the end of this module, which is just what contexts are, why they're useful, and then extensions, priorities, applications, and how to put them together. Now, again, really simple example, but again, laying the, 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 the kind of the foundation and the framework for you know, moving on and, and using some more advanced applications. All right? So from here on out, I've got less formal presentation, and I want to just kind of, kind of open it up and, and do some more informal examples of things you may want to do in the dial plan. Sound like fun? Sure. All right. So let's first, let's, let's first do voicemail. Anybody here like voicemail? Yeah, voicemail's great. Chocolate, yeah, okay, I give. I give. Okay, so let's, let's close this for a minute. Right, so how, how hard do you guys think it's going to be to, to do voicemail on asterisk? Is it going to be awful? It's going to be easy, right? So let's take a step back. The first thing we need to do is we need to create the voicemail box itself. Okay. Anybody want to guess the name of the configuration file that has the voicemail configuration? Voicemail.com. Voicemail there, there was too many people that said it at the same time. I don't. <laughs> you don't want me to do the shotgun approach to the chocolate. So, so if you go into voicemail.com, like like many of the other configuration files in Asterisk, there's a general section up at the top. Imagine that, right? You guys are trying way too hard. <laughs> In, in the middle of the, the voicemail.com, there's a section called zone messages. And a zone message um, is a combination of a time zone and the way that the time and data is read back to the user. So if you have some users that are in the Pacific time zone and some in Central and some in Eastern and some in you know, Zulu time, you can, you can change that. So there's a couple examples here. So here's like military time. Um, you know, the, 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 the time zone is Zulu and this is going to say voicemail received. And I, and I can't remember what Q is, uh, oh, today, yesterday, at so many hours, so many minute, hours, and it's going to do, you know, phonetic, and say Zulu, uh, you know, as the time, okay? Underneath that, you have voicemail context. Just like we created different contexts in our dial plan, we can create different contexts for voicemail as well. And again, if you have two different companies running on the same system, they'll have independent voicemail boxes and that sort of thing. So let's just come down here, and here's an example of, of a mailbox. You put the mailbox number, an arrow, the PIN number, or the password, comma, the person's name, comma, and an email address. The email address is there so that Astros can send you an email and say, hey, so-and-so left your voicemail. Okay? So here we've got a, a mailbox 1234. Should we go ahead and create a mailbox for 6001 and 6002 and 6003? Sure. Oops. 6001. What should the PIN number be? 9999. Don't use that as your PIN number in real life. Again, just, just as, an, as an example here. Uh, mailbox 1. Did you change the, the PIN number later? It changes it in the file here. It'll actually come in and rewrite the file with an updated PIN number. Absolutely. 6002 to be mailbox 2. 6003. Okay. So now that we've, we've created those new, new mailboxes, okay? Once we've done that, we can come back into the, into the asterisk command line interface. So we can type voicemail reload. And then we can type voicemail show users. See who has a mailbox on the system and if they've got any new messages. And there you see we've got a mailbox 6001, 6002, and 6003, okay? Now we need a couple more things though. Might be useful to be able to leave a message in a, in a voicemail box. How do you think we do that? Extensions.com, right? We're going to go to extensions. And here, instead of playing back weasels if they didn't answer the phone, we're going to say, go to voicemail. And we're going to tell it which mailbox to leave the message in. And there's some different options that we can pass here. Do we want to play a busy message, an unavailable message? I'm going to say I want to play the unavailable message. Okay. And we'll copy that down here and change the mailbox there and there. And sure, why not here too? Here. We'll even be tricky here. 
we'll say that we want to leave the that we want to leave the message in two different mailboxes. Whichever one you specify first, that'll, that'll be the one that uses the message to play back, but then it'll leave a copy of that voicemail in two different mailboxes. Oh, yep, 604. There we go. I told you I was going to make some typos. All right? Does that make sense? The second parameter tells it what, what type of message to play. Is, do you want it to play a message that says, this user is cur currently unavailable? Or do you want to say, hey, I'm on the other phone line. Please try back again later. You, there's several different messages that you can leave on that. A busy message, unavailable message, um, that sort of thing. If you leave that off, it'll just play the, the normal, the default system message. Yeah, I should probably turn that, uh, turn those timeouts down. Let's go, sure, six is a good number. Where? Oh, here, yep. If, if we don't specify a time here, what it would do is it would just, it would just ring and ring and ring and ring. So let's put six seconds in there as well, sure. And here too. Absolutely, we'll do that here in a minute. Okay. So there, there we have it with, with voicemail. Okay. So again, I'm going to do course set verbose two so that I can see if there's any problems. Do a dial to play and reload. No problems. Turn my verbosity back up to three. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I dial? It might. One ring. The person at extension six zero zero one is unavailable. Please leave your message after the tone. When done, hang up or press the pound key. Woohoo! You've got mail. And now, if we do voicemail, show users. Hey, there's a new message sitting out there in mailbox one. Not too bad, right? What it take us about four lines of code to get to get voicemail up and running for th for three mailboxes? Not too bad, right? But that's only half of the voicemail problem, right? Now we can leave voicemail messages. How do we retrieve them? Hmm. You need an extension to dial to retrieve your voicemail messages. All right, let's go add another extension to our dial plan. What 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 should we have in people dial to be able to check their voice messages? Six thousand. Sixty-nine, sixty-nine, ninety-nine. Now let's tell which context to look at. Okay, so this is saying, you know, when when you dial in this, it's going to let you in to retrieve your message. It's going to prompt you for your mailbox number, and it's going to look for the mailbox in that voicemail context called default. Okay, one line. Reload our dial plan. Now let's see what happens when I dial this. Let's do this one. Comedian mail. Mailbox. So I want to dial 6001. Password. Password is 9999. You have one new message. Press one for new messages. Press two to change folder. Press three for advanced options first. Message received at 8.18 a.m. Time's obviously not running. Press 3 Sorry. for advanced options. Press message deleted. Press 3 for... And it's that simple. Okay. One more line in your dial plan, and now you've got access to, to go in and retrieve your messages. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, there's, there's only one more thing that we need to add that we haven't done yet, and that's the, the, the ability to turn on the little message waiting light on a SIP phone. You want the light to come on when somebody has messages so that they know to go in and check their voicemail. So to do that, we're going we're to go back into our sep.conf configuration file and just add one more setting here to these phones. So where's our phone one here? We're going to say mailbox equals 6003 at default. And what this means is if there's new messages in mailbox 6003 in the default voicemail context, Every minute, send a message out to this phone and say, hey, turn on your little red light. 
And when the messages go away, go send a message to turn off the little red light. 